welcome back thank you so very much for joining us and today we are continuing our topic failure and to start off this second part of this segment uh, we're going to demystify failure uh, so many times people have defined failure as setting out to do something and maybe not accomplishing it or getting bad grades in school or I don't know there's so many things we fail at failing to wake up in the morning at I don't you know set time. <laughs> at your set time whatever that might be uh, maybe midday or something I don't know <laughs> people get up or um, trying to learn a skill and you know stopping halfway so today we want to talk about failure but from a different perspective uh, I have learned in life that once you can correctly name a thing, give it the right name, whether it's a problem or a situation you're trying to deal with, it's easier as resolved than when you can't put a name to it. Mm -hmm. So today we have Dr. Chris and Brian and your girl, <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> But I'm your host for the day, and um, so we're going to continue down that line. Now, to start off, like we mentioned in the first part, perspective is everything. So you're either going to call yourself a failure or someone who has learned a different way that doesn't work, mm -hmm. and you're going to try out something different, or someone that has discovered that you're good at one thing and maybe not so good at another, and that is that's the rabbit hole we're going down uh, today. And um, to start off, I would like for Brian to tell us how he defines failure uh, mm -hmm. in his life. Okay. Um, thank you very much for the kind introduction there. Um, so how do I define failure? Mm -hmm. um, I think as I mentioned this in the first video, right? Um, my way of looking at failure is simply something that did not go right okay mm. it's not the end for me it's rather one other thing that i shouldn't be doing mm -hmm. and so for me failure is 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 basically a learning a mm. learning moment right mm. it's a moment to reflect and decide that okay um what do i need to do differently mm -hmm. to achieve the same goal that i want or do i need to entirely change my strategy mm -hmm. um, but i stay focused on the goal right? regardless of the failure it's really just reevaluating my, my my options at that point. So that's how I view failure. Okay, so are there moments where the goal ever changes? <laughs> um, yes, there will be moments where the goal might change. Maybe it's the wrong goal that you're trying to achieve. Mm. But uh, most cases, no. Most cases, it's the it's the process or the strategy that is wrong. Mm -hmm. The goal stays fixed. Okay. Um, but you just reevaluate how to get there. Because if you know where you want to be, because you usually want to know where you're headed first, and then once you know that, most cases, it's just how to get there that is the problem. Mm -hmm. And maybe you miscalculated something, you just need to reevaluate. Or maybe you um, need more time. Exactly. Maybe it's just time that you need. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times we get lost into the grand scheme of things, the bigger goal, mm -hmm. right? Because this goal is so grandiose, um, it, it, failure is going to be inevitable. And you haven't carefully thought about it. What I usually do is I take it one step at a time. Mm -hmm. Because trying to accomplish the whole goal, is impossible. So what I do is I, I look back and say, all right, what do I need to do now to get me a step closer to this goal that I'm trying to achieve? Okay, yeah. so to sort of, you know, contextualize mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. we start with a big picture. Yeah. The headlines. Yes. And then we map out stories. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then you take one story at a time. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think, I think that's that a perfect is, way to look at it. I think that is that is beautiful. Yeah. I, I'm taking notes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm taking yeah. <laughs> I'm taking notes. Um, um, and and Dr. Chris to you know like kind of build on that. Uh, so we have the big picture. This is the end result. They usually say the end justifies the means. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't matter how you, of course, ethically speaking, and all those considerations in, uh, but the end so building from what you say though you know big picture and then break it down to manageable bits that you can chew on 
uh, what has your experience along those lines been like? Uh, my experience along the lines of mapping out the big picture, uh -huh. building the stories that get you to that big picture. Uh -huh. uh, I am still a student. Okay. Uh -huh. um, And every day I learn many things. Mm -hmm. This is a very unique way of putting it, and I think it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. It's the big picture. This is who I want to be, or this is how I define myself. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is my potential. Okay. Right? But the map uh, is the steps or the things I need to do every day to get you closer to, get to my potential. Yeah. yeah. So that way, I, say, I look at it. Mm -hmm. what, what Brian is saying is, is so powerful, it's giving me chills. <laughs> um, I love that. <laughs> it yeah. says, if, so failure is basically failure to meet your potential, yes. the big picture. The yes. big picture. Right? So you have to define who you are or who you want to be. To be. Uh, I, like most people, I'm learning. Mm -hmm. um, I think I know who I want to be, mm -hmm. um, and I've thought about it a lot. Yeah. But you know, when life heads headwinds come, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, people who don't know you or your plan, they tell you you can't do it. Mm -hmm. You know. So, like all people, I struggle with that as well. Yeah. Uh, but stories, the, 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 uh, what you call them, the map or the yes. path. Mm -hmm. um, that's a tough question, but um, mm. <laughs> I I see the potential. Right? Yeah. Um, so you see the big picture. The big picture. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you never lose sight of that. Oh yes. You know, it's 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 like the the, the New Year's goal. Sometimes it's a little blurry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but a little blurry. Headwinds yeah. are coming. It's raining. It's mm -hmm. stormy. Yeah. But it's always there. It guides you. you know? mm -hmm. It's always there. Yeah. Uh, so I guess what he's saying is then the discipline to stick to the little things. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't yeah. call them little, but he called them yeah. the roadmap, the things yes. that get you to the big thing. And so uh, where have I failed? I have failed in the little things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The two minute things. The two minute yes. things, you know. Yeah. Where it's, I said I'd wake up. I'd, I didn't, I slept another hour, right? Mm -hmm. Or two. Mm -hmm. Or two. <laughs> Let this little blurry. So, yeah. um, um, so that, I don't know if I answered your question, but that's how, yeah. that's how I'm, inter that's how I'm interpreting what you yeah. said. It's so interesting. Um, in listening to the two of you speak, there's like so many ways we could branch off to right now and mm -hmm. I'm struggling to keep focused Focus. at this moment. Because yeah. you've talked about plans and roadmaps. Mm -hmm. And you've talked about the small little things. Mm -hmm. And honestly, my mind is telling me, let's talk about the little things. Right. Um, and then you've talked about the big picture. And for someone who's out there and trying to figure out how do I see the big picture? Mm -hmm. And sometimes we, we take these things for granted or think they are obvious. Mm -hmm. I literally had to have someone hold my hand and, and walk me through these things. And um, one of the things that I learned a while back, maybe about 10, no, not 10. Yeah, actually mm -hmm. 10 years now, um, was to imagine your funeral. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Someone has technically called it the initiation of death. So this is your last day, you're dead, you lie still in the coffin, and you're listening to all the speeches that your sisters, your husband, your children, your friends, you're listening to what they have to say about you. And you're trying to imagine what would I want, what do I want to be remembered for? Who do I want to, uh, to be known as at the last point of my life? And once you can hear those speeches, one, it helps you realize that life is not as abstract as we try to think of it, like you begin to narrow down your focus. So if you want to be remembered as the best doctor there is, then you're not going to spend your time learning the law. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the law is interesting. 
though mm-hmm. it, although it's interesting and of course now you bring in also the thing of priorities but we will get to that <laughs> mm-hmm. so because you're able to see that big picture basically walk to the end and for those of you who are christians i love that god starts with the end mm-hmm. your life starts with the end it never starts with the beginning because once you step at the beginning he does know the end so once you have the end in mind it's easy to map out mm-hmm. this but the reason i went down this i just want to talk about the small things and Rachel, <laughs> why would you say um if, uh, speaking about the small things cuz let's say i was seven and i wanted to be a lawyer being a lawyer is big work i i couldn't even qualify to study law until i was an adult i'm going to university but what are the small things that happened along the way that we never even notice i don't mm-hmm. think nelson mandela well seated in prison was thinking go oh, i'm going to be one of the most well the mm-hmm. world's most famous prisoner i don't think that's what was going on in his mind and every day as you're going through life you're writing your story mm-hmm. so rachel what would you say about the small little things that compound to make an effect at the end of the day or at the end of the month week yeah 10 years later and what has your experience been like uh, for those small things okay so i'm in the presence of greatness and i'm honestly very speechless i am literally learning i'm like you know what you can't be saying anything just be quiet and listen but <laughs> uh it's it's i also believe it's those like you You, you guys have been saying the small things for me it has been um consistency and uh that's staying focused it can be yeah, at some point like yeah, that consistency for me i feel like if this is what i want this is what i need to do to get here this is what i have to do uh this is who i need to talk to maybe consistency of, like I can't lose focus of this. I need to consistently if I need to read, consistently read about it, consistently learn something new about this particular thing. Mm-hmm. Consistent for me, it has always been consistent. consistent. So being consistent with the small things. Exactly. Whatever. In the little things. Mm-hmm. 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 Because often I may know I was little things, but it's those little things that cripple you. Mm. Yeah, because I feel like if you can work on the little things the biggest things are easier mm-hmm. to to mm-hmm. like get to yeah yeah brands point mm-hmm. yeah word maths <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah uh okay um to bring up a very very key thing consistency dr mm-hmm. chris what does that look like for you and why let like you tell us about discipline discipline ah uh, consistency discipline uh, i think that those are the keys to success mm. in fact is uh, um it's it, a lot of people have written about it and talked about it over the years mm-hmm. but if you if you genuinely seek it there's ways to get it okay uh but discipline is the key discipline is the key to success Mm. What does it mean to be disciplined? Thank you. I was going to mm-hmm. ask you. <laughs> <laughs> well, just this close to ask you what does it look like? Discipline um it means many things to different people, but for me, um mm. uh, the, the 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 simpler definition I've taken, right? Mm-hmm. Is that if I said if I said this is the little goal that's going to get me to this one. Mm. And I have to do it. and i have to do it no matter how i feel mm. right so take your feelings <laughs> you know mm-hmm. and acknowledge them yeah acknowledge them um um and do it anyway the best example i can give you uh, and whoever he is that's listening whoever you are here if i say it you will see it. just look back at your own mother mm. right when she was tired mm. tired you know after back broken work after she was tired like she had no more left to give and then 
one of us began crying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no matter how she felt at the moment, she right? still picked you up. She picked you up, mm. right? The discipline uh, to do difficult things, no matter how you feel, and sticking to them, which, you know, which exercises consistently. Mm. In fact, there's a uh, there's a, a character trait which you can actually test yourself for. Mm. And that character trait will predict success. Mm. It will predict success uh, to a very high level of accuracy. Mm. It's, it's called uh, conscientiousness. Mm. Right? It takes into account discipline. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Can you stick to something and Can you do follow it? through? Mm -hmm. Can you follow through? Yeah. And, even, especially when it is hard, because when it's easy, mm -hmm. they never can do it. Yes. Yeah. Especially when it's hard, because that's when it counts. Mm -hmm. uh, when you face the obstacles and you have to pivot, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's also part of conscientiousness. So I would say, whoever you are, uh, do that test for yourself. It's, mm. It'd be like the one, the greatest thing you, you can do for yourself. Because if you know you, you said to label it, right? If you know that I am good at this, or I like most of us, I myself, I, I'm not very conscientious, but I work hard every day. I, I, I push discipline. Mm. Mm -hmm. I, I force myself to be disciplined so I can be conscientious. Mm. Yes. Um, uh, so that's how I would answer the question. It's, um, well, that is that is very powerful. Um, for some reason, I can't get myself to say that word. I can't spell it. I know what it means. But the pronunciation refuses. <laughs> so that word that he said, <laughs> uh, that word that he said, um, <laughs> to, to just break it down, basically, when someone is that word, conscientious, yep. that word, they, they have the ability to set aside how they feel or cry through. It's okay to cry. Mm -hmm. It's okay to feel like giving up, but you don't stop moving. You don't. And, and, and our goal today is to encourage ourselves and you who is watching us that we don't stay in the same place and we don't move backward. We just make a little step forward every day. You don't have to make milestones, just one uh, step towards where you want to go. Um, and, and, you know, on that, on, on being disciplined and, and on doing what you have to do, emotions aside, uh, Brian, I would like to know uh, <laughs> what that has been uh, mm -hmm. for you, what uh, it has been like for you, because I know you've set crazy goals and gone after them, um, one of which, and I hope this is not, <laughs> <laughs> one of which was like starting out to go to the gym. And I usually think that is a very good example to use. Uh, so I would like uh, for you to share what that journey was like uh, in relation to your feelings and the goal mm -hmm. that you had set for yourself. Okay. Um, so before I actually answer the question, I just want to add a little bit to the whole roadmap situation mm -hmm. um, because it ties into that in the end. I think um, if I give an example, for example, um, when you want to go to a certain place, you have you know the place you want to go to, right? Mm -hmm. I'm from here, maybe I'm going to this town. Mm -hmm. Now, most of us in this day and age will pick up, you know, our phones and get the map and then try to go, you know, turn by turn or, you know, reach here, turn left, get here, turn right. And eventually you get to that place. Yeah. That's basically just as good as setting a goal and mm -hmm. then devising the ways to get to that goal. Um, most times you have to tweak it depending on the goal that you have. Mm -hmm. Now, the same map that gets me to town A is not the same map that gets me to town B. If I go and follow the same map to get to town B, I'll <laughs> most certainly not reach town B. I will only yeah. get, you know, get lost for, 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 for sure. So I think as we plan these things, we also need to recognize that when you have a goal that you want to get to, the strategy is not always the same. Mm -hmm. And you should know when to change the strategy and when to use a different map to get to where you want to be. Um, now, getting back to discipline and, uh, and, and, and putting feelings aside, gym is one of the, 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 the things to try out and see if you're really going to be consistent and all of that. Because you know the goal, but it's very painful to get to that goal. Mm -hmm. 
I think for me, what I've realized is feelings or, or emotions or all of those things will always be there. They are consistent. They are not really something to deter me from the goal. So I feel the pain, but I do it anyway. You know, mm-hmm. or I, in some cases it's fear. Maybe I'm trying to achieve a certain goal and I think it's too big. I will feel the fear and I'm like, I don't think I can do this, but I'll do it anyway. Mm-hmm. Because to me, the fear is not an excuse. It's really just validation that this is actually something big you're trying to achieve, mm-hmm. that you need to do it. Mm-hmm. And so regardless of, you know, the pain, yeah, I remain consistent and, and you know, sort of go disciplined and ready to get to the goal. Mm-hmm. Because I know I, I expect all these things. And it goes back into what I said earlier. It's like expect difficulty or failure, right? Um, most of the times we fail because we fail to expect failure. Yeah. And because you fail to expect failure, it catches you by sort surprise. of, you know, by surprise. <laughs> and you're like, oh, wait, I thought this was easy. <laughs> yeah. um, but if you plan for failure, then you know when to expect it. And the way I usually do it, and I might have shared this, you know, with you at some point, but I look at the worst case scenario of things, right? Like, if I'm going to do a, achieve a certain goal, what is the worst case scenario that might come out of it? Mm-hmm. And if I prepare myself for that worst case scenario, then I'm good to go. Because once I take care of the failing part of it, then I know the goal is achievable. Because if I achieve the goal, perfect. Well, then there's like no problem. I like practical examples. Exactly. So uh, yes, so practical examples. If um, you set out, yes, maybe you want to, mm-hmm. I don't know, go to school, go mm-hmm. back to school. Yes. So how would you go about that? Okay. A uh, very good point there. Very good question. So let's say I set out to go to school. The goal is I want to maybe go and graduate and have a master's degree, mm-hmm. right? Now, school is, is very hard. But the problem is I, I don't look at it as school is easy. I go in knowing school is actually going to be hard. But then I take it one day at a time. If I complete this assignment by the deadline this Friday, then I'm one step closer to graduating. Mm-hmm. Now, it, in that moment, it is a struggle. I'm, I'm really having to read lots of things. But I know if I read this page today, then I'm closer. I read the next page tomorrow, I'm closer. Rather than worrying about the deadline, course, which yeah. is coming yeah. anyways. Oh, it's yeah. not going to change. Yeah. Um, but can I do what I can today just so that I'm closer? So I think for me, that's how I ended up you know, planning most of my things and Obviously, there are days when you leave things for the last minute and you regret it for sure. And those are instances of failure Most that, assuredly. I, that, I, that I went through. You know, at the points where I, I actually waited to start the assignment two hours before the deadline, only to open it and it required a week's worth of time. <laughs> and ultimately, you will fail the assignment, but then you learn a, a lesson. You're like, all right, next if time. I had, yeah, next time, maybe I should read, you know, one page this week, the next day and so forth. So, yeah, yeah I think. Um, uh, and that failure is not because you're not good. Exactly. No, no, no. Just the, yes. The, the time you uh-huh. one week and you have right. one hour. Yes. You yeah, failed yeah. You in the planning. Yes. The, yeah. the, the planning uh-huh. was the planning. No, yes. It has individual. no bearing on no. your cap- That's a very capacity. key point that you bring up. Yeah. One of the things you need to do is isolate yourself from the failure. Wow. What caused the failure? That's, it is not because you're, you're a bad person or you, mm. you cannot do it. It's because you did something that you shouldn't have done. So if you're able to isolate yourself from the failure and look at the situation, what caused the failure, you know, what part did you have to play in it, then you remedy that. In the end, you're the same person who will succeed. You just got wow. rid of the failure. Yeah. Wow. This is so powerful. I, I'm literally <laughs> taking notes. <laughs> I'm literally taking notes. Um, one of the things that I remembered when I was coming, so when I did the bar exam, uh, for New York, it's a two-day exam, and I remember after the first one, I came out and I was tired. I was scared. It was all the bad feelings. I was like, "Oh my God, this exam was so hard." And then I had a voice <laughs> said to me, like, "What did you expect? It was not a coffee date." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's like you went out for ice cream. Yeah. So I was like, "Yeah, it yeah. was supposed to be hard." Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. So, and, and, and just to what you said, like being able to call things what they are, we're mm-hmm. expecting things are hard and anything worth having in life is hard. It's, hard. Mm-hmm. it's really hard. So <laughs> there's, a, there's a gentleman that says, embrace pain, embrace failure, embrace the hard things. And that will set you above, I think, Nearly 